A reading of the mission statement. The mission of the school district of Springfield Township is to educate and develop all students as learners and citizens who are high achieving, resilient, and responsible in a changing global community. Let's do roll call. Ms. Green. Mr. Needleman. Here. Mr. DeFranco. Here. Dr. Etlin. Mrs. Green. Here. Mrs. Hubley. Here. Mrs. Hughes. Here. Dr. Tara Tusky. Here. Mr. Bedard. Here. And Mrs. Sarsfield. Stand by, technical difficulties. It's all right. The microphone, two over. One, two to the right. That was right there. Get to the left. Make sure that's all. Make sure that's all. Yeah. And we're good. There's just one announcement this evening. The board at its discretion may videotape all or any portion of public board meetings subject to the limitations set forth in policy 006 meetings. Board meetings will be broadcast on Friday afternoon following each board meeting. I will turn it over to Dr. Yannicko, and we're gonna make a quick change in our agenda. Okay, I'm so glad to see all of our students here this evening. And I asked Mr. Bedard, our board president, if he would be okay with us switching the order so that you could go first. And he agreed. We thought it would be a good idea so you could get home after you've had your performance. And I'm sure your parents agree. So, Dr. Markle, do you want to come on up and introduce tonight's Spartan Spotlight? Okay. Everybody, it's very nice to see the school board and all of our visitors. Um, we were very proud to be asked to come and uh, do the Spartan Spotlight. And so um, we've had a wonderful time of celebrating and honoring Hispanic Heritage Month at Enfield. Um, but I had a special teacher that really kind of went above and beyond um, and wanted to highlight this uh, special month. Um, and just to give a little backstory, uh, Mrs. Uh, Jackie Charles, she's a second grade teacher, has been teaching here for a good amount of time. Um, she, a couple of years ago, she had a student um, that came to us and, and didn't speak any English. Um, and Jackie just immersed herself in supporting this, this student and figuring out um, how best to communicate and, and make her a part of our school community. And so even though we think it's really important to honor things in certain months, um, we want to make sure that's happening all throughout the year. And so Mrs. Charles is just one example of a teacher that does that. And we have so many at Enfield. Um, but she did a special presentation with our class. And so Dr. Yannikun wanted to invite her second grade students to come. So I'm gonna invite Mrs. Charles up and our second graders, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Charles. Come on up, friends. Um, one of the things that we do in second, well, in all of Enfield is start off the morning with morning meeting. And so one thing that we like to do in our classroom is start the day with a Spanish song. So we pick one song, then we sing that song every day for a week and we learn different things. So we learn some greetings. We've learned um, about the seasons, right? We've learned, what do we say when it's really cold outside, everybody? Yeah, hace <laughs> frío. Um, and we've also learned, um, we've learned to count up to 100, right? And, and that was a really exciting one. We're going to be learning um, lots of different songs as this year progresses. And um, we actually partner up with um, Mrs. Jeannie Cohen, who's the high school Spanish teacher. And she comes down and visits us a couple times during the year. And her students get to come and teach our students some Spanish. So the first day they're coming is next week for to teach us about Dia de los Muertos. And then in the spring they come, they write children's books in, books in Spanish. And when they come, they'll read it to our kids. And luckily, lucky for us, our class already will have known a little bit of Spanish by that point. So they'll really enjoy those um, children's books. No, okay, that's okay. 
All right, guys, we're going to sing it without the... So, and I'll give a little background too. So our, these, this class gave a, they made a wonderful video and it taught step-by-step step about a special song. And so the Enfield classes then got to watch that during their morning meeting and learn the song. And that was all because of Mrs. Charles's class, right? So it was very, very special. So they're famous here at Enfield. So yes, yeah, so and friends, you're just, we're going to just sing. Okay. All right. Ready? Buenos dias, buenos dias, como estas, como estas, manos arriba, manos arriba, manos de paz, manos de paz, hola, 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 amiga, hoy será un día bonita, hola, 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 amiga, hoy será un día bonita. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Manos arriba, manos arriba, manos de paz, manos de paz. Hola, 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 amiga, hoy será una tarde bonita. Hola, 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 amiga, hoy será una tarde bonita. Right, and then the last one is when we say good night, we say Buenas noches, buenas noches, como estas, como estas, manos arriba, manos arriba, manos de paz, manos de paz. Hola, 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 amiga, hoy sea una noche bonita. Hola, 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 amiga, hoy sea una noche bonita. <laughs> nice job. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. Mr. Fleming, can I ask that you come take one, one picture real quick? It's just so we can get it. That's so great. And then we'll be all finished. Thanks. So students, that was wonderful. Can someone tell me what you were singing about? Because it's been many years since I had Spanish and I think I knew a few of the words, but I'd love to hear. Um, day, um, Afternoon and night. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to share? What does that mean? Manos arriba. Hands up. Hands up. And how about manos de paz? Um, hands up, peace. Oh, hola, 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 amiga. What does that mean? Hello, hello, friend. Oh, hoy será un día bonita. That's a long one. Hoy será un día bonita. Okay, go ahead, bud. Today will be a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, second grade. Excellent job. Excellent. Thank That's you. it. Okay. You can go. Hi, Dr. Marco. Uh, students and Ooh. Mrs. Charles, before you head out this tonight, and with your parents' permission, of course, after you leave, um, sometimes when students do a really nice job at something, as you just did, um, you know sometimes I make some special Spartan candy bars, <laughs> all right, as the Willa Wonka of Springfield Township. <laughs> so, Ms. Charles, you are welcome to share these with your students. Thank you. All right. That Be careful, that one arm is a little broken. Now, uh, students and families, you are dismissed unless you would like to stay for the remainder <laughs> of the meeting. We appreciate you coming in tonight. Thank you. I'm going to check one more time. Is Judge Bronca here? Okay. Okay, while the students are leaving, I'm just going to quickly finish um, my report. Uh, with regard to news and happenings, the PSAT was administered to juniors today at the high school. 
Um, our middle school football team hosted their first game on Friday and had the first points through the new uprights. We were very happy to see that. Um, this Thursday night, we have National Honor Society induction. And I'm very grateful. I wanna um, say a special thank you to the Springfield Township High School class of 1958. Um, these uh, alumni are gonna be celebrating their 65th reunion this weekend. Um, they have raised over $25,000 and created a scholarship for graduating seniors that we will begin with the class of 2024 in honor of their 65th reunion. So really nice thing that they've chosen to do. Um, for the board, there are uh, several board motions in front of you tonight. In addition to personnel, uh, there's an item called Ad Education. This is an agency that will provide additional supports um, for substitutes as needed in a variety of specialty areas. We also have the comprehensive plan for the next three years, which has had its 30 day public viewing. And so it's ready for uh, your review and approval. Uh, we have Empower Ed, which is a teacher training program focused on co-teaching at the middle school. Um, and we are very excited to have Jenna Rufo, an excellent expert in the area who's gonna be continuing that training with our middle school staff. And finally, we have a partial tuition contract for a student headed to New Hope Academy. Um, and so that's what you'll see on the board motions this evening. And again, I'm very grateful to Dr. Markle and to our students at Enfield for their celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month over the last month. Thank you so much. And that concludes my report. Excellent. Any uh, comments or questions from board members on the administrative report? I declare that every school board meeting from now on has to have second graders <laughs> singing. <laughs> that was incredible, fun, and wonderful to see the joy in those kids. That was awesome. All right, so we're going to go backwards in the agenda and actually hit our reports and information. Uh, and we'll start with our homeschool partnership. Uh, and if uh, Britta Kinkelde is here, thank you. We'd love an update. I'm Brenda Die. I am this year's co-president for the EHSP. Um, I wanted to let you guys know about our trunk or treat that we are hosting on Saturday at Enfield. It's from 3 to 5 p.m. It should be a lot of fun. We're going to have games. We're going to have raffles. We have a couple of really cool sponsors. If it does rain, we will have an alternate plan, I promise. So it will not get canceled. Um, tickets are still on sale until Thursday. They're $5 each. Um, and we're also looking for some more trunks. So if you want to volunteer and trunk, have your trunk or event for the kids, please, please do. Um, we actually also this year for the first time have um, some candy monsters at both schools. Um, we had some wonderful parents decorate some big tubs to make them look like fun candy monsters. So we have two at Enfield, two at Erdenheim. They're at the car lines and... Um, bus drop and we're encouraging everybody to drop non-candy items, um, allergy friendly treats so that we also have some of those available at our trunk or treat. We also have our next general meeting in November. Um, I believe it's on the first Wednesday, but don't quote me. Um, I should know that. I feel bad. I'm sorry. Um, we will have another special election because we have some more board positions to fill and we do have volunteers who stepped up for that. So we will be voting in a co-chair for fundraising and also a um, co-treasurer. So come and join us for that general meeting. Everybody's welcome to attend. We will also have a Zoom link so you can tune in online as well. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for today. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Trunk or treat is always a great time. Any comments or questions? All right, we will get an update from our Multicultural Parents Association. We have Dr. Angela Beal Tafik here as well. Hola. <laughs> no, so I bring you greetings as always from all the parents in the district. It's wonderful to be here. Um, I am Angela Beal Tafik parent liaison for the Multicultural Parent Association. Um, MPA held our first meeting of the school year on October 4th. We were joined by several student affinity groups such as GSA, Gender Safe Alliance, the Multicultural Club, Guide Right, also known as Maturing to Manhood, and the Jewish Affinity Club from the middle school. 
We also heard from the Jewish Affinity Group and Voices of Excellence from the high, from the high school. Additionally, we were joined by students from, S, uh, from CISV who shared their international experience with learning about new cultures. CISV is an organization that offers international experiences to children so that they can learn the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion through different cultures. Finally, we, were, we achieved social emotional wellness with Dr. Frank Edwards of Inspire Consulting Group, also, who also joined us to remind us to think about who we are. Join us for our next MPA meeting um, uh, on our next one, sorry, is December 13th um, in the school district. And I'm doing good because I, you know. There it is, yes. Our next meeting at 6.30 at Erdenheim School Library. Also, we invite you to join us for our MPA book club meeting on November 27th. Our location is still T TBD, where we will discuss the book, Don't Ask Me Where I'm From by Jennifer De, De Leon. Please be sure to check the weekly school e-blast for more information and thank you so much. Thank you. Any comments or questions? All right. We'll head over to our student update from Naya Kennedy. Hi. At Enfield, they are proud to share that they have started their Star Student of the Week program again. One student from each class each week is recognized and meets with principals for a special morning celebration. Students will have their picture posted in the hallway and will take home some special prizes. The Second Step program has has started. The Second Step program is a curriculum resource for social emotional learning programs that allow them to foster common language in our school community. These lessons teach the students skills for learning, empathy, emotional management, problem solving, and friendship. Wednesday and Thursday, the second graders were able to take a trip to the Churchville Nature Center. They were able to explore nature as well as learn about the land and animals. The kindergarteners had been learning about different roles in the community. They were visited by the Orland firefighters to learn their roles in the community as well as tour the fire truck. This Saturday, the EEHSP is hosting their annual trunk or treat at Enfield. They are preparing for the upcoming Halloween parade and fall celebration on the 31st. At Erdenheim, the fifth graders the fifth grade teachers and students held their second annual Goal for Gold championship kickball game where Ms. Ellerson's class came out victorious with a seven to six win. With the help of the third and fourth graders, the fifth grade team was able to raise $800 and will go directly to the MIP Foundation to support the fight against childhood cancer. On October 10th and 11th, the fifth grade students and teachers had their annual fall trip to Camp America where they had a fun-filled day with rock climbing, zip lining, and team building activities. They are also excited that students have signed up for both Chess Wizards and the first session of Science Explorers. Thursday, October 12th, marked the start of this year's Reading Olympics teams for the fourth and fifth graders. A special thanks to the school librarian for all of her and the staff's preparation for this year's Reading Olympics participants. In the music department, we want to give a special thanks to Mr. Gibson, Dr. Bennon, and Ms. Chawadi, who are working diligently to plan and schedule chorus, band, and strings lessons and rehearsals for students. On Thursday, October 19th, the Fall Picture Day for students and staff will be held. Finally, on October 31st, there will be an annual costume parade and fall celebration for students and staff and families are welcome to line the parade route to cheer on your students. The middle school fall sports are in a full swing with a successful season. The fall drama production of Madhouse is in full rehearsal mode, getting ready for their thespian performances to take place on November 1st through the 4th. The middle school hosted Rex Ogle for their first author visit of the school year. Today, October 17th, as part of the summer reading assignment for English, all students read one of Rex Ogle's books. The PBIS program will be hosting their annual Quidditch match this Wednesday, October 18th, during the half day for those eligible to sign up for their earned PBIS points. The middle school fall fund fundraiser wrapped up 
their first week of October with a rough earning of approximately $9,000 for student council fund. The Kids' Choice Fundraising Team has visited with rewards and hosted their annual bingo party for 100 students with qualifying sales. Those who raised enough look forward to visiting the Citizenship Bank Park in the near future after the Philly season concludes. Cookie dough and frozen food delivery are expected in the next week. And the middle school Halloween parade will take place on October 31st on the half day. Additionally, the student council began gathering applications for officer positions and other leadership roles to prepare for the election being held on November 6th. And finally, the committee career day presenter signups have been finalized as the middle prepares for their first career day on November 17th. For the high school on September 22nd, we had our yearly activities fair. All of our clubs participated and our goal this year is for each student to join at least one activity. We had a successful homecoming kickoff on October 6th. Over 35 organizations participated in tabling and raising money for their groups. A big thank you to Ms. McCaslin for organizing the event. Earlier today, the juniors took the PSAT at the high school and the National Honor Society will induct 79 new members on Thursday, including myself. In sports, Adam Floor tied for second place and will be Springfield's only representative at the state championship tournament. Golf team broke the school record shooting 184. The boys soccer team won the Freedom Division Championship for the second consecutive year. The field hockey team has clinched the Suburban One League Freedom Division Championship. They will play tonight to determine if they are co-champions or if they will win the title outright. And lastly, the girls soccer team has had a strong season and hopes to remain in the playoff picture as they finish their regular season tomorrow night where they will honor their seniors. Thank you. Wow, that was an update. Comments, <laughs> comments or questions? Congratulations on being inducted. Thank you. Yeah. It's quite an achievement. It is an incredible achievement. And uh, Naya, we, with so much incredible content, we might need you to come to the interim meetings as well. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll make, we'll make that happen. All right, on to uh, a fan favorite. Uh, we're going to get the finance committee report <laughs> update from Mr. Neil DeFranco. How do I follow that? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> We met. It was great. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Finance Committee met on Friday, October 13th, 8 a.m. virtual. In attendance from the board included myself, Dr. Tara Tusky, uh, Mr. Bedard. From the administration, we had Dr. Yana Cohn, Ms. Green, and Ms. Jenko. First, we uh, covered the financial updates on capital projects. Uh, many of you may know that we did a borrowing last year of uh, just under $10 million dollars. And this was utilized for phase one projects that fall under that issuance, including the high school partial roof replacement and the middle school track and field renovations that are near completion. The uh, Erdenheim ramp is in its early stages. And then we also have phase two and phase three of the high school partial roof replacement that are expected to take place during the summers of 2024 and 2025. The entire high school roof will be under warranty following completion of that phase three project. The middle school renovations and additions project is in the early pre-design design phase. Next, we discuss the middle school renovation addition project and the financial plan. We reviewed the district goal number, number five, which is to work to address long-term capital and financial planning to support facilities improvements that support the transportation department and the middle school addition renovation projects. Updates on these projects will be communicated through committee meetings, newsletters, and board meetings. We reviewed the financial borrowing plan. These projects are to be funded through four borrowings spread across multiple calendar years to stagger the impact of debt service on the district, uh, the district budget. This strategy utilizes $10 million per year borrowings from 2023 through 2026. Structuring the borrowings in this manner allows the district to utilize bank qualified bonds, which offer lower interest rates for shorter, with shorter call features. The total estimated borrowing will be just under 40 million. Each $10 million borrowing increases our annual debt service payments by approximately $577,000. 
Total annual debt service for the district runs around $8 million per year, including principal and interest making up roughly 12.34% of the overall district budget. We moved on to the 2024-2025 budget and timeline overview. I feel like we just did this and now we're doing it again, uh, but here we are for the next year. Uh, we re began with a review of the guiding principles that support the district mi mission, and we then reviewed the budget process utilized by the administration. This process includes a revenue budget, uh, a revenue budget that is created by the business office and is based on a five-year historical trend, current economic climate, and external data. A personnel budget is created by the Business and Human Resources Department and is based on enrollment projections, updated benefit information, and salary data reflective of contracts. Building budgets are created by budget administrators utilizing incremental and value-based priority methodologies while referencing historical data as a guide. Department budgets are created using a zero-based budget to adjust to changing departmental trends. Proactive five-year financial outlooks will be created by all budget administrators utilizing economic projections, contracts, department cycles, and market trends. Next, the Act 1 index for 2024-2025 is 5.3% this year. This is the maximum that the district can raise property taxes without approved exceptions or a voter referendum. Historically, the district has kept tax increases below the Act 1 index. Finally, we reviewed the upcoming budget process timeline. Uh, the next meeting will be November 14th. It'll be a finance committee meeting. It'll include the 2022-2023 audit presentation and the 2024-2025 budget discussion, including the introduction of a potential senior tax rebate program, as well as scoreboard replacement in the stadium. Uh, next, we'll have a regular board meeting November 21st, where we can anticipate voting on the accelerated budget opt-out resolution. This is a certification that the board will not increase property taxes by an amount that exceeds the Act 1 index of 5.3%. February 9th, is the deadline for departments building uh, the department building budget administrators to submit their budgets. February 15th will be a finance committee meeting. It'll include the 2024 2025 budget discussions. And then March 14th will be a finance committee meeting to review the first look at the 2024 2025 budget. April 18th, finance committee meeting to review the 2024 2025 proposed final budget. And then May 7th, the interim board meeting for the approval of the proposed budget. And then finally, June 18th, regular board meeting for the approval of the 2024-2025 final budget. Uh, we did not have any public comments. Future, future committee dates, as I said, November 14th. This will be a virtual meeting uh, at 8 a.m. And uh, that's everything. Thank you, Mr. DeFranco. Any questions or comments from the board? Great summary. And to the public, um, you want more of that. You want more of that. November 14th <laughs> is our next finance committee meeting. What, what's even more exciting is that we do it at 8 a.m. virtually. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing everyone there. Uh, it is always, <clears throat> always a fun discussion. All right, we, <clears throat> we are actually gonna go backwards in our agenda. Uh, and do something uh, that is a lot of fun. Um, many of you will recognize a not new, but new to this session face in Kat Sarsfield, who has uh, been appointed by the board uh, to serve in, in a temporary basis um, on the board to fill a vacancy uh, set by Ms. Slipinski, who has served uh, honorably. Uh, Kat uh, has been a long serving board member in the past and was the last seated board member. And we uh, asked her to step in, help us get through the election while we had an, an open seat. Um, we had uh, a judge, the Honorable Thomas Branca, who was going to be joining us in person. Unfortunately, he called and was not able to make it. He is on the phone. Uh, we're getting him on the phone and we're going to do an over the phone swearing in. Uh, all right. <laughs> Here we go, and uh, I'll walk over. This is fun. Just next to your microphone. Judge Branca, this is Jeff Bedard. I'm president of the school board here in Springfield Township. How are you? Hi, Jeff. I'm fine. I can't believe this happened to me. I got totally turned around with getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm so, so sorry. No problem, Your Honor. I have you on speaker. 
<laughs> okay. And we are we are ready to just to jump in. I have with me Kat Sarsfield, who is uh, the board member who is is uh, being sworn in this evening. And if I could ask you to to move right into that, that would be a wonderful thing for the board. Yeah, terrific. Hold on, I'm going to jump right in in two seconds. Hold on. Wonderful. Thank you, Judge. The Springfield Township first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you still hear me? Yes, we, we can. Okay, can you please state your full name and spell your last name? My full name is Catherine Lewis Sarsfield. That's S as in Sam, A as in Apple, R as in Robert, S as in Sam, Field, F I E L D. All right, do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States? and the constitution of this commonwealth and that you will discharge the duties of your office with fidelity if so please answer i will i will congratulations you're sworn in i will get there uh, to the township building uh, tomorrow uh, to sign the oath as well wonderful thank you your honor appreciate you calling in uh no problem i'm so sorry for the foul up i like doing this and i'd like to be there all the time because I really do think uh, being on the school board is something of a thankless job. And I really want to congratulate uh, those of you who serve because it's a very important position uh, for all of us. So thank you all. Take care. All right. And thank you for your service. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. Wow, we did it. Uh, congratulations, Kat. Thank you. Okay, um, finding our spot in the agenda, I believe, uh, Ms. Sarsfield, would you like to make any comments now that you are officially on the board? She can vote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can vote. No, thank you, thank you all for asking me to, uh, to step in. I'm happy to be here and support Springfield once again. Thank you. Okay, we um, are gonna move to public comments on agenda items uh, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Needleman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bedard. Uh, at this time, we'll take public comment on agenda items. Uh, I, while folks have joined us in person, I don't see that anyone has signed up to speak on an agenda item. I'm going to ask if anyone who's joining us online, and I do see a number of folks joining us online, if any of you want to speak on an agenda item, please raise your digital hand anyway, and we can uh, make that happen. While I'm waiting for folks to raise hands, uh, let me just remind everyone, we do have a three minute time limit and I'll ask you to state your name and where you live in the township. And I don't see any hands raised on agenda items. Okay, thank you. Seeing no comments on, no public comment on our agenda items, we will move to the agenda. We have uh, three items that I'm going to lump together for a single vote. That is the approval of minutes and the treasurer's report. I will read all three motions and then we'll do it as a slate. The first, approval of minutes for the recommended action. The board of school directors approves the board minutes from September 5th, 2023. This was our interim board meeting. The second, approval of minutes, recommended action. The board of school directors approves the board minutes from September 19th, 2023. This was our regular board meeting. And finally, approver, approval of the treasurer's report. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the September 30th, 2023 treasurer's report per the attached. Are there, is there a motion? Thank you, and a second? Second. Any comments or questions on the minutes or treasurer's report? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, those will pass. Moving to human resources, the first item is personnel. Recommended action, the Board of School Directors approves the following personnel as presented in the attachment. Professor, professional personnel, support personnel, temporary personnel, extra pay for extra responsibilities 2023-2024, and conference workshop attendance. 
Is there a motion? Motion. Thank you. In a second. second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Personnel file will pass. Our next up is Ad Education Incorporated Contract. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the agreement with Ad Education Incorporated for supplemental related services and paraprofessional staffing needs, effective October 4th, 2023. Is there a motion? Thank you, in a second. Any comments or questions on the Ad Education Inc. contract? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? That will move <laughs> forward. On to the academic affairs section. We have approval of the comprehensive plan. Recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the submission of the Spring School District of Springfield Township Comprehensive Plan. This approval comes after approval from Academic Affairs and having completed the required 30-day public review period. The approval includes submission of the PDE required comprehensive plan and the additional required plans for induction, professional service, excuse me, professional learning, academic standards and assessment, gifted education, and student support services. Is there a motion? And a second. Second. Any comments or questions? I would just comment on behalf of the board, congrats to the Academic Affairs Committee and the administration. That was a well done and quite lengthy comprehensive plan per the name, comprehensive. <laughs> All right, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That will pass. Our next topic is empowered, recommended action. The Board of School Directors approves the professional services agreement with Empower Ed and the School District of Springfield Township for training workshops and coaching cycles for teaching staff during the 2023 and 2024 school year in an amount not to exceed $17,450. Is there a motion? And a second. I heard a tie. Maybe a second. Yep. All right, we got a second. Um, any comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Empower Ed will pass. Next topic: New Hope Academy school year tuition contract. The Board of School Directors approves the partial tuition contract with New Hope Academy for the 2023-2024 school year for student 20231017-01 in the amount of $39,432.12. Is there a motion? Thank you, in a second. Any comments or questions on the New Hope Academy tuition contract? Hey, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That will pass. All right, we have made it through the bulk of our business for the evening. We will now turn to public comment for non-agenda items. And again, I'll turn it over to Mr. Nino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bedard. Um, at this time, we'll take public comment on non-agenda items. Uh, let me start with the folks who are joining us in person first. I see uh, Kim Crowder has signed up to speak as Ms. Crowder. Oh, there you are. Please come forward. Um, and let me just remind you as well, we do have a three minute time limit and I'll just ask you to uh, just tell us where you live in the district, please. Yes, please. Whatever you're comfortable, Whatever you're comfortable with, of course. But. Uh, okay, my name is Kim Crowder, give me my address. Yes, please. 427 Flower Town. There you go, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna read so that I can go more quickly. So excuse me for not making eye contact. Um, I, I will give you a, a one minute warning. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Kim Crowder. I sent a letter to each of the school board members yesterday regarding my concerns for the safety and security of my son and other students in the district who specifically had a need for one-to-one -one aids. 
I want to say a special thank you to Dr. Yannikone uh, for her prompt and exhaustive response to my concerns and her return email to me yesterday. And I appreciate the time and the effort that went into such a well thought out response. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned in my letter, my plan was to attend tonight's meeting because I'd like to present to you what it's like for me as a mom of Jesse Crowder, an eighth grader in the middle school who has Down syndrome, uh, what it's like for me to send my son to school. Um, I would like to ask you all to imagine for a moment that you have a son or daughter that has a cognitive disability and that disability made speech very difficult for them and made being able to find their way while walking difficult. I can understand my son, but very few other people can understand when my son speaks. Now imagine having your child who is difficult to understand when he speaks now has to go to school. Can you imagine the trust that is required for parents such as myself to send my son to school and to place his safety and security completely in your hands and then go to work? Trust must be absolute. Now imagine that 18 months ago, you hear about a student at Enfield Elementary School who left school without anyone knowing and what that feels like for you as a parent to think, what well, if that was Jesse? If, he, if someone found him, that he might not be able to tell them his name or anything like that. You hope it was an isolated incident. Then subsequent to this, you notice that many aides are leaving. And when every single one of them leaves, they all are telling you that they're leaving, even though they didn't want to. They are leaving because they can't live on what they're making in our district and the surrounding districts are offering more money. Over the last few years, I have had to begin my request for an aid for my son to be able to participate in the drama program in July. I sent an email to Jesse's teacher, Mr. Fuller, the principal, and Dr. Yannikone three months before I need the aid. Then I email again in August and then again in September. So for 90 days, I've been saying it's coming. We're going to need an aid. And in Dr. Yannikone's email response to me yesterday, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I still didn't get my question answered as to who is my son's aid after school. Um, so one, now, one minute. Mm -hmm. sorry, one minute. oh, I'm down to one minute. Sorry. Um, so now I'm aware of a child who has exceptional needs escaping the elementary school, a mass exodus of aides from our district, very few new aides, and the final straw, a student at the high school last week who also has exceptional needs walked right out the front door of the school with no aid. That student has a one-to-one -one aid, and that student walked right out the front door, and no one knew where he was for 30 minutes. Thank goodness both students were found safe. But let's go back to my original question. How would you feel sending your child to school knowing what I know? Would you stop advocating to ensure your child was safe? I'm scared. I'm afraid that something is going to happen to my son. And it is hard to balance that with wanting your child to also be independent and do all the things that all the other typically developing students do, like participate in the drama and theater program. My son has all of the specially designated, excuse me, specially designed instruction and supports in place in his IEP, but none of them matter if they aren't being followed by the staff because there isn't enough staff to provide those services. Safety and security for our most vulnerable students must be made the highest priority. We have heard much about diversity, equity, inclusion over the last 24 to 36 months, and it is not lost on me that our new diversity statement does not include students of different abilities. I'm going to skip a bunch. I'm oh, sorry, time's up. I'm done. Okay. It looks like that uh, concludes our list for folks who are joining us in person, unless I've missed anyone. I'm scanning the room. I don't see anyone. If anyone who's joining us online wants to talk on a non agenda item, uh, please raise your digital hand. And while I'm scrolling through, I just remind everyone. We do have a three minute time limit, as you've seen. And if you would, please just let us know where you live in the district. And I do not see any hands raised. Seeing no hands raised online. Thank you, Mr. Niedemann. Um, we have some future meeting dates to announce. Uh, we have our interim board meeting coming up on Monday, November 6th, 2023. It is a hybrid meeting and a regular board meeting coming up on Tuesday, November 21st, 2023, also a hybrid meeting. You'll note that the interim board meeting on Monday, November 6th is Monday, not Tuesday, and that is because it is aligned with the week of the election. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that uh, we weren't on top of election night. We have some future committee meeting dates. We have an academic affairs committee coming up on Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. That will be at 5 p.m. That is a virtual meeting. 
and as previously promoted with gusto, our finance committee will be meeting again on Tuesday, November 14th, 2023, and that's 8 a.m., also a virtual meeting. Details for how to register and log on for those meetings are found on the district website. Uh, we are now at closing statements, so I want to open it up to the board. Uh, if there are any comments or questions from what we heard this evening, uh, any of the updates? Yes, Ms. Tarateski. I want to acknowledge, Ms. Crowder, that you did not have the time to finish your statement, so I just wanted to invite you to email it to the board if it is indeed different that, than what you had sent us the other evening. Okay? Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments or questions? Okay, and Dr. Yana Cohen, I'll turn it over to you. Any comments or questions to close the meeting? Uh, no, I'll just thank Mrs. Crowder um, for the reply. I appreciate that. And we'll let you know that Dr. Dennis will be reaching out to you this week. She was on a field trip with her own children today, but she'll be reaching out to you to, to discuss all of your concerns and hopefully resolve them right away. Thank you. Uh, one thing I would add, and uh, again, thank you, Ms. Mrs. Crowder. Um, and I would say for anyone in the district, parents, uh, uh, community members, I think one of the things that I've gotten a lot of um, confidence in in this administration and Dr. Anna Cohn is that when uh, questions come to her desk, they're taken very seriously, no matter the topic. And when it has to do with safety and security, of course, it's going to be at the top of the list. So um, thank you for your comprehensive response and we'll continue to uh, support our students. Okay, with that, we will adjourn for the evening. Go Phils, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.